I'd like to start by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the lands I'm speaking to you from today, and acknowledge traditional custodians across the lands where you are all joining us from as well. I'd like to pay respects to elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm really excited. I am joined by the committee of the Community Initiative Award winners, Blue Fringe Arts. Please join me in welcoming Megan Butler, Rhonda Santi, Lee Mitchell, Sherry Brandon, Imelda Eames, Nikki Boys, and Karen Stevenson. Thank you all for joining us. Congratulations. Hi, thank you. Hi. Hey. <laughs> So wonderful that you could all be here to talk with us today and to kick us off maybe Megan you can tell us about Blue Fringe Arts and how it got started. Sure thank you. Uh, firstly I want to acknowledge that the members of this committee here today live and work on Aboriginal land. I want to pay my respects to the Darug and Gundungurra people, the elders past, present and emerging. We understand that this land was and always will be Aboriginal land. Well in 1992, a family was grieving their loss of their daughter, Adrienne Brown. Losing her was devastating, not only for her family, but also for her support workers who had been part of her mental health journey. To honour Adrienne's life and love of art, the family and their community worker created the Adrienne Brown Awards, which has evolved into Blue Fringe Arts. I wish I'd met Adrienne because she loved music and writing and art. And this is what we're all passionate about on the Blue Fringe Committee. As we celebrate the creativity and resilience of people with a lived experience of a mental health issue, so too we acknowledge the creativity and resilience of a small grassroots committee who make it all happen. Year after year, busy community workers, volunteers and supporters, we come together to ensure it all works. We've worked so well together with such a diverse group of artists and writers who share their stories with you through words and pictures. It's been a bumpy road at times and Blue Fringe has faced many challenges and threats to its survival. We've soldiered on. We've had small exhibitions in local galleries, primary schools, and then an eight year run at Wentworth Falls Tate where we felt we'd found our home. Then COVID arrives and everything changes. Now into our second year in a virtual gallery and having produced two fabulous books, we haven't just survived, we've thrived through creativity, resilience, and the healing power of art. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's an incredible story to hear at, and that something has grown out of a lot of pain, but continues to centre the importance of lived experience. Uh, Rhonda, maybe you can tell us um, what insights people with lived experience bring to the work that you do and to the community more broadly? Yeah, I think um, it's 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 a really important voice and sometimes even, you know, as wonderful and skilled as our community partners are, so, um, it doesn't replace having people with a lived experience involved in... Um, it, 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 at the centre and at the heart of Blue Fringe, um, uh, rather than sometimes it can be a more tokenistic, um, like here's some things, please review them. But it's very grassroots and very from the bottom up. And I think that's really important. I think um, it helps to inform the committee's, um, you know, commitment to providing a safe space and a safe forum for people to, um, uh, express themselves and have an outlet for their experiences. And it's not that at any point, I think any of these wonderful people are gonna forget that, but sometimes it can be a small thing that not, might not be apparent. So, um, you know, not if you're at a time of high anxiety, not being able to answer the phone, for example. So I think that's really important. And um, I think I, I, really appreciate there's that, um, you know, that balance of voices between people with a lived experience and, and not. And I think that's, again, really important. And it lets people outside of the committee, I think, and the broader Blue Fringe community know that 
their voices will be heard and validated and respected. Um, and one of the things that Blue Fringe really tries to do, whoops, my video just went off. One of the things that Blue Fringe really, uh, one of the aims is to raise the profile of people living with a lived experience and confront stigma by, so it does that just in itself by showcasing that creativity and, um, but as well, by the broader involvement of people with a lived experience, it gives those individuals the opportunity to have a meaningful role in the community and in and using their strengths in, in different ways. But it also shows others that people with a lived experience can do lots and lots of different things and do them really well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I think that sense of sharing your art, I, I'm don't consider myself an artist but I know that it takes great vulnerability to to share and especially particularly some of the works that we see in Blue Fringe and I think it helps to you know let people know that there's that's going to be a safe space and we want to reduce any barriers to people being involved in Blue Fringe we want to help make it as nice as possible and I think particularly this year I've, I had some feedback from an entrant who had missed the midnight deadline and she was having a, a feeling very worried about that and was very anxious and then felt you know the the embarrassment that can come about your reaction which I personally understand and when I spoke with her I was able I, and as soon as she knew that there was other people on the committee um that have a lived experience and people understand it's a very beautiful respectful committee I think you know she was very reassured and I think people feel that in a real way. Yeah, that's incredible and a sort of great intro actually to my next question. So I'll throw this open to everybody. That was so wonderful to hear the real impact of having lived experience in the committee um, and maybe anybody that can think of it. Um, can you tell everybody a specific time when you really did see the impact that the project is having. There's well, so many. Yeah, um, I, I, <laughs> Lee, Lee, you go ahead. Well, I know in my personal experience, um, I was diagnosed bipolar 15 years ago, and the first 10 years were, I mean, they were, they were tough, tough years. And I think in 2016, I entered Blue Fringe for the first time. And I really, I, I never... I don't think I would have started that artistic journey any other way than through Blue Fringe. Um, yeah, I mean, the art world is a scary, scary place to enter. It's not the most welcoming place in the world, but Blue Fringe really couldn't be more welcoming. I mean, the fact that they they accept every um, every entry, because um, I, I never considered myself an artist like Rhonda, although she, she is. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I entered and it really changed changed my whole life. Like um I really discovered a passion for for art and and found a way to express myself and to tell my story um in a way that I mean with art you can you know you hide secrets in in your art, you know, you can you can say things that you couldn't say any other way. And then when you when you enter them and you go along to the to the exhibition. I mean, people respond to your work and, and you respond to others' work and you can, there's a secret language that, that, that artists speak, I think. And uh, yeah, it's, it's recognized. And, and from there, the community forms. Um, yeah. But as I said, yeah, it's, it's really changed my life quite dramatically. <laughs> I'm getting all choked up. I love yep. that story, Lee. Yeah, thank you, Lee. But I, one of the things, I mean, just taking on what Lee has said, that that those connections and artists seeing other artists or um, even coming along to, to the exhibition. And um, Lee said about that secret language of artists. But I think there's also that, um, you know, that whole idea of that fellow traveller. You know, you might be all of a sudden in a room of people who have a lived experience or or their family members do or their whatever, but that's not what the focus is. 
the focus is this wonderful celebration of creativity um, and you, you're all on this journey together. So I think that can, those connections are really important. And I know as part of the committee, when we've been at the tape, for example, in a physical gallery and just being in that space with people interacting with the art and with one another, you see so many moments of, um, you know, just connection and, and magic, really, really beautiful. Yeah. We've also had, um, we've had a literature component to the festival for many years and that, that has come together in more recent years with the art festival as well. And you can really feel through the literature that people are, are really telling their story very openly and, um, and the feedback we get from writers is that they, they need that opportunity to have a voice and they haven't had that before. Mm, and yeah. Blueprint gives them the space um the safe space to do that and and to be celebrated for it mm. and in fact when when we're having um the in-person um exhibition and with the the literature we've invited um uh people who've entered a piece to to read that piece um in front of an audience and and for some that's um for some that's not something they want to do or they might ask for another person to read it they'd like it to be read but it's not something that they want to read themselves but for for other people not only writing that piece not only entering it not only seeing it in a book like a published you know a published work but then also reading it to to an audience it's just these really powerful moments of of, of people having an opportunity to be validated to be seen to be celebrated um, in in a context where it's more than just well just more than family and friends it's 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 the broader community um, seeing them in a in a whole new light and in a celebratory light it's just there are so many um, moments that um, and each meeting that we have we we will reflect on um, the impacts of blue fringe won't we we'll be like oh do you remember that time when oh, we can't help ourselves yeah yeah we're like, our own biggest fans <laughs> <laughs> meeting is like this celebration of the impact of blue fringe um it's just it's just wonderful and we get it year round on the committee so we don't just get it at the the actual event we get it in the, the meetings as well yeah. mm. i think the other important thing about especially literature i think um is that because it is often just very raw and very you know real sharing of what it's you know people's experiences so for people that are not living you know or have don't have any experience um of mental illness they're really that's a really powerful way to to get insight into that especially if mm. you're that you have that person standing in front of you mm. um telling part of their story so that's really powerful yeah uh, it sounds like such an incredible environment to be in, a, as you said, year round to have that, um, be able to celebrate vulnerability in that way. Mm. And Lee and Karen, you both um, said before the stream that you're artists. Why do you, what do you think are some of the reasons that creativity is so important to mental health for everyone? Um, I, I can answer that. In a very short answer, I think it's um, just being able to be able to create something without someone. I, I've constantly been told by people who think they're being helpful. Well, why don't you just go and draw a picture or just create? You no, know, go and go go and do some art, you know. But um, I think it's just being able to be creative without someone telling you to do that. So that, that's what it is for me anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. I think particularly to... during, um, during COVID, those with a lived experience, I mean, it's, it, it's, been, it's been particularly tough. But uh, I mean, for me, just to, just to have something physical that you can hold in your hands and whether it, where it's clay or whether you're drawing or, or painting, um, it's a really amazing way just to, to get outside yourself for a moment and, yeah. and, and to offer some respite. Mm. 
and the values in the process, isn't it? And so it's not just what you end up with in front of you and it's not just what's on the hang, hanging on the wall in the exhibition. It's the process, the journey of actually getting there, but also, and then from a viewer's perspective, it's the story behind it that really, really um, has the meaning and the, and the value. And we really, um, I think, you know, we were looking at the work this year and when you add the, you look at the work and that's one thing, you add the title of the work, that's another layer of meaning. Then we've got the artist statement, which really, you know, sometimes tells a really personal story, sometimes it doesn't, but it's still, it's just those layers of insight and story that people are sharing with us that make it really special. I like that idea of, of layers. Um, uh, yeah, it sounds like art is, and creativity is such a great way of exploring those layers for yourself, but also for other people to be able to witness it. Uh, Sherry, the program's been running for a long time. What are some of the memorable moments? There have been so many memorable moments. And you're like, you're right, 29 years is an extraordinary lifetime yeah. for a community-based event that's brought together in this really grassroots way. So I think the combination of what this little festival sets out to do is kind of almost like a golden kind of combination of factors. And I think at its simplest, when we think about Blue Fringe, you know, it seeks to do those three fundamental things. Celebrate the creativity of people with a lived experience, destigmatize mental illness and encourage the use of creativity to stay mentally well. And there's so many times when those three things have come together so beautifully. One of the things, one of the highlights I um, reflect on is our local leadership. So our local elected officials at a local state and federal level are very committed to this festival. And like the rest of the community, they've all got their own personal experience, their own personal lived experience, either individually or as a partner or as a parent of someone. And they tell those stories so frankly with such warmth with such humour that it really is such a powerful message about destigmatizing mental illness. When you see our local leaders who are the local authorities and respected, be candid about that. That's incredibly powerful. So there are always great moments. Um, the fact that this festival has been able to evolve for 29 years and most recently kind of see us going from, you know, a kind of almost crafts version of an arts display to this online and, you know, very um, much more technically um, sophisticated thing that we you know wouldn't have dreamed of being able to achieve but you see this mix of skills in the community you know coming from people like lee coming from you know other community partners and and being able to evolve and keep with the times the fact that blue fringe could show up during covid mm -hmm. and create a focal point for the art that it didn't go away but um one really quick story that i think brings all of those factors together um, was a young woman who entered, it was the first year we had a youth's entry um, and she was a bit of a reluctant entrant um, and would do so un only under the proviso she could be anonymous, but um, she came to the exhibition, experienced privately actually, she wanted to come through just as uh, while no one was around, she looked at the exhibition, she read the artist's statement, she felt confident enough to put her name to her art, she asked could we, could we um, put her name on there and showed up to the awards day quite publicly and out. And that's kind of like a journey over the course of the four days that exhibition was on. I think that's pretty powerful to go from someone who doesn't want to identify with a community to feeling confident and, um, and able to identify. So it does all of those things. So you can't help but love it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. And it, uh, to me really exemplifies that what you were speaking about earlier, the importance of having lived experience as part of the committee because you understand the challenges and provide those opportunities of different pathways. Mm -hmm. um, Imelda, can you tell us some of the challenges that the program has faced? Mm, absolutely. And, you know, over, over 29 years, there's been uh, multiple challenges. Obviously, COVID um, in the last two years has been uh, the most um, the most recent and personally for myself, the biggest learning curve um, to go from um, a, a real life um, event where you're meeting people and you get a really clear idea about how things are being responded to and um, to going online um, 
and and looking in the virtual gallery and um, Lee um, has just been amazing in jumping in Lee was curating in real life and then we went to the um the online and it was like do you want to give this a go and Lee was like sure I'll, yeah. I'll give this um sort of curating online such a different way of doing it and has just done it so beautifully so so the challenges of of um COVID have have given us a lot to work with and I think we have done an amazing job of of being able to bring people together when we weren't able to bring people together I think yeah. um it, it feels really so rewarding to to have been in a position where we actually um were able to produce something of such a high quality and and it is thanks to the the team um overall um for being in a position for us to go okay well you know yes we can we'll give that a go lean in <laughs> give it a red hot go yes we will pirouette beautifully <laughs> um but, but but the bigger challenges that that we have and that many um uh, project community organizations and projects have are, are around funding and and the challenge of um each year looking for the funding applying for the funding working out which funding is appropriate for what we're doing it does take a lot of time a lot of energy and a lot of um, fingers crossed to see where we're where we're sitting um, a number of years ago um, uh, members of the committee realized that um, one of the ways to sustain blue fringe was to look to the local businesses and to encourage them to to come on board with their own reasons for being connected to Blue Fringe. And that's just been a massive uh, strength to, to what we're doing of having local businesses that, that um, sponsor one of the awards or sponsor um, how we can make it happen. And that has been amazing foundations. And, and through COVID, uh, we've still been able to maintain those connections and we didn't necessarily approach them for money when things were tough, but still celebrated the partnership um, that they have that they are involved in regardless. Um, and I think um, that that has been a, a wonderful way of us um, to, to create those connections within the community. But the, there is the, the issue with funding is, is an ongoing problem. Many grants... Um, really look for new initiatives, look for new ideas. Um, it can be hard for a, 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 um, a project that's been running for 29 years. It can be hard for us to find where we fit um, into uh, some of the grants and some of the opportunities. Um, and Blue Fringe is bigger than the sum of all its parts. And it's hard to reflect the, the, the Blue Fringe stories. Like you've heard some of the stories, like there is just there's, there's so many stories that we um, know of that show the ripple effect of, of this project or this engagement or this um, opportunity, destigmatizing all of those ripple effects are hard to capture in a funding, um, a, a funding world that is looking for more, um, uh, more, more individualist, less, less community partnership, less, um, less opportunities for, for the bigger picture um, so that is a, a challenge it's not just a challenge for us but it's a challenge for uh, the sector um, and it is a challenge for how we uh, report on what blue fringe is because it's just too hard to put into words um, all of the things that blue fringe is but but having said that we have been um, we're very lucky bendigo bank has been a long time supporter um, the blue mountain city council has been a long time supporter like we do, um, we do have people that are, um, and organisations that are very committed to seeing Blue Fringe happen um, and know um, that the work that we do within our organisations, within our community and then within Blue Fringe is valuable and important and worthwhile. Um, but, but it does, yeah, the funding does create um, the concerns at the start of the year when we're like, Okay, so how are we going to fund, you know, we need a new gallery, how are we going to fund that um, <laughs> in the online when, you know, we don't necessarily have a, enough money in the kitty and, and the beautiful thing this year Blue Fringe we had, um, we had an 83% increase in entries this year from last year, which is a beautiful problem to have, um, but it automatically means the book is going to be more expensive because we need to have more pages in it and the gallery you know we we're needing to do some different things to the gallery so that was more expensive so 
you know, this wonderful problem that we've got means that, um, you know, suddenly uh, the funding is again um, a, an issue that we just can't pull more money out of a, out of a hat, so to speak. Mm. Yeah. Was anyone else wanting to, to speak on, on the challenges? No, I was just thinking as you were talking, like if the funding definitely is a thing, because it always takes dollars, but, um, but I, I, I guess one of the things that I think is at the heart of the um, su success of Blue Fringe is that, um, you know, making sure that we're, we stay at the heart of Blue Fringe and what it's for and what it reflects, you know, back to the community and what the community brings to it. And I think it's really important. And I, you know, maybe foolishly hopeful, but I think by, you know, maintaining close to the heart and that grassroots that uh, Sherry mentioned, um, I think um, that that is sometimes a challenge in that kind of environment and maintaining the partnerships with different things. I mean, in our community, you know, last year, you know, there's bushfires and floods and COVID and all sorts of things. So um, maintaining the love through all that is, mm. you know, comes with a bit of a challenge itself, but for Blue Fringe, it's kind of, you know, for us, it's easy to do because we love it. Um, yeah, but I, I think it is, it takes work. It doesn't come without mm. attention. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I was just the only thing I was going to like, it's much more expensive to do it online. The, um, the way that it needs to be produced now takes a higher order of money that we don't have. And we do know from our experience in getting um, business supporters, we would always kind of ensure that they attended the awards or had a blue fringe experience. And our learning from that was if people came and experienced it, they'd come back and support us continually. And, and that's what we found. And, and yeah, it's, it's a little hard. We need more money and we have less opportunity for that kind of connection um, on an online, but it's become much bigger, so. Yes, the challenge, one of our challenges this year is because it's online. And so because it's gone around the world, quite literally, and we've got people from other countries looking at it, that we had a query from um, uh, from someone from America wondering if they could enter. I was like, <laughs> oh, well, I was like, oh, I'll hold that till next year. I can't quite process yeah. that. <laughs> the little festival that could. <laughs> but you're absolutely right, Rhonda. The, the keeping it also as as the grassroots, the genuinely authentic um, uh, event that it is, that is embedded in the community and balancing that with being able to spread the word and spread the joy of Blue Fringe, like it is a delicate balancing act. And, mm. um, and it's one we take very seriously um, as a committee to reflect on um, how do we grow? How do we grow authentically? How do we grow so that participants, um, the participant experience is, is a better experience, is a respected experience um, and maintain um, um, very much the grassroots identity that Blue Fringe is so beautiful at. Mm. Yeah, it's quite an achievement to to be 29 years old and to not have and face those challenges, especially financial challenges, and to not have lost the heart and soul of the program and the festival. Nikki, what are your hopes for the future for Blue Fringe Arts? Oh, there are so many. I think um, firstly, I think you know, Blue Fringe has impacted so many people's lives in the Blue Mountains over the last 25 years. I guess our hope is that it continues for at least another 20, 29 years to be um, a positive and a safe space for anyone with a lived experience of mental illness to express themselves through creativity, to share their talents, to tell their stories and to have a voice. So that's, you know, that's, that's our hope. Um, our virtual exhibition and online workshop um, program this, that we ran this year has really opened up Blue to a whole new group of people who may have never participated or even had a conversation about mental health before. So we hope we can continue to find ways to reach more people and to support their mental wellbeing through creativity. And perhaps not just in Mental Health Month each year, but hopefully as a sustainable and a ongoing community centre uh, community centre program that could run sort of all year round. That would be amazing. We're also um, really thrilled that we've had more youth entries this year than ever before. So our youth categories are 
um, and open to anybody of high school age. And it's really about celebrating um, the benefits of creativity for mental health and wellbeing and for building resilience. So we really hope that we can encourage more and more young people to have, a, have positive conversations about mental health through Blue Fringe and to help them be really proactive in their own mental wellbeing. So, you know, this, we, every day on Blue Fringe we see the value. So we just hope that we can continue and to reach more people and to do, do more good work to support them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Of course, we can take over the world with blue fringe. Yeah, <laughs> we have, haven't we? <laughs> you know that doesn't sound bad at all. <laughs> I <quite> like that. <laughs> and then, Karen, to finish off our conversation, what does winning the award mean to Blue Fringe Arts? Um, I think uh, to start with, it validates to the artists and the writers who've shared their stories with us um, you know and without without those entrants there'd be no blue fringe exhibition um, mm. uh, it's also important for um, blue fringe to be recognized by the new south wales mental health commission as they're like being the peak body um, and uh, the focus i guess that the award will bring now to Blunge will help us to reach further and just keep going ahead and raising our profile. Um, yeah, and I, and I guess for me, like on a um, personal level, um, exhibiting as an artist, you know, it's, it's, it's an acceptance from my peers, you know, and there's the, and the validation and that, that everything that goes with that. So, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations to all of you and of course to all the participants and artists and everybody involved. It's been so wonderful to not only hear about your work, but to hear about the passion and the commitment to lived experience that Blue Fringe Arts has. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your stories. It's been wonderful to chat with you today. Thanks, Asha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching today. Uh, please learn more about Blue Fringe Arts and, of course, check out the virtual gallery. Links will be in the chat and comments. Uh, yeah, check them out and have a look at all the artwork from this year. <laughs> Join us on Monday, the 25th, where we're chatting with Amy Malloy from The Space Podcast, winners of this year's Mental Health Matters Media and the Arts Award. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon.